I'd like to start off first who I am and what I do. My name is Salem Krieger. That's the first part. And before I even was interested in photography, I used to be an illustrator worldwide. <laughs> I was doing drawings for magazines such as Psychology Today, uh, postcard companies that I don't remember, rejected cover for the New Yorker magazine. <laughs> I did a series of drawings for the American Bar Association, um, and this one was titled Plague of Lawyers. So in my early days, this is what I was doing. I was drawing. This is how I was making my living. But I have, was always interested in photography. Again, some more illustration work. Today, I, I make my living mostly by specializing in location portraits. I photograph for a variety of clients. One of my clients was Fuji Film, And this was uh, a piece from a series I did called People as Portraits, which was also shown at the Javits Center in New York. And this whole series was dealing with photographing people, just showed a, photographing their faces, but only showing their clothing or pieces of who they wore, because that's how we get impressions of people. You don't always need to see the whole person. So I had this idea, for instance, this was the super of my building where I live in New York. And I set to, asked him to bring me some of his clothing. And we set this up in one of the boiler rooms. And this was the shot. And then I photographed his face and so on and so forth. And this was a neighbor of mine. Again, her, her daughter and her, we put her clothes on the couch. And I just did little headshots we put in the frames. Uh, I've shot for people like the Financial Times of London. And I'll be called to do locations which are just totally bland office spaces. And this turned out to be a shoot for Ariana Huffington with Simon Shama from Columbia University and in interviewing with, with uh, Ariana. So again, it's a matter of working on location and trying to get something interesting out of it. This was for Forbes magazine. This gentleman was involved with touchscreen technology. So here we are. I get stuck in hallways a lot of times when I'm doing corporate photographs. So we're setting up here. And th that was the shot that ended up running in Forbes magazine. I had him doing a little make-believe touch screen in the middle of the air. Uh, this gentleman is very interesting. There was a TV series called Mad Men. And that show was based primarily about this man's life, Jerry Della Tufamina, who worked on, on uh, Madison Avenue for many years. And we shot this at, inside Grand Central Station. There's a place called Campbell Apartments. So, and he's being interviewed with Kath, uh, Kath, Kathy Ropey from New Yorker magazine. Uh, Jeff Biukas, HBO, ALL, CEO. This was for the Financial Times of London Weekend magazine. And again, these are some of the people I was encountering through my commercial work. Then I was doing some of my own street work. For years, I've been photographing the New York City Puerto Rican Day Parade. It's a great parade. I just love the idea of using the streets of New York as the background. I had an assistant with me, and she, it's funny, she was trying to clean the streets in the background there. And I said, no, don't touch that. That, that was one of the great elements that I loved, was having the street feel to it. So I was just meeting these people. They were just coming right by and say, yo, can I talk to you just for a second? Hold on. And then, then I would take their shot. This man is the guy who uh, digs a gun, was responsible for organizing and starting the famous Brooklyn Mermaid Parade at Coney Island. So we photographed him out there on location. That's um, my assistant and I set up some lighting. We got a chair from one of the restaurants nearby. And then I basically sepia toned this to give it that old Coney Island flavor. This is a photograph taken at the Mermaid Parade, uh, which is a great parade if you've ever been there. Uh, Gary Nell, CEO of Sesame Street. There you see I'm there with my assistants and the makeup artists. And I had gotten some of the people working in the office to put on these costumes because I said, oh, this would be great. So this was part of the shot, which ended up having Gary with his Muppets right there. Uh, this was done in the 3rd Avenue and 86th Street in New York. Originally, we were photographing that newsstand for, for another project. This woman was walking down the street. I ended up in a conversation with her. I told her how much I loved her jacket and whole outfit. She ended up doing a few shots with us. And I ended up using this for a uh, visa ad that they picked up. Bank of America picked this up for a visa ad, which ran on kiosks all over New York and some other places. Xerox had 
been doing some work with me and had seen some projects I was working on. And I presented this idea to them about, you know, I go out to see my mom who's in a nursing home in California. She's in a uh, yeah, nursing care center, at one of the veteran centers in Colorado. So we ended up doing this book called Visiting Mom to feature their printing press, which is an iGen printing uh, system, which is a beautiful system. And these are oversized books. I think this was like 13 by 10, somewhere around that size. So these were shots done at the veteran center of the different people. That's my mom. <laughs> She's quite interesting woman, my mom. That's my mom test driving a Ford, 1933 Ford fire truck. That's one of the views at the uh, home lake. That's the name of the center, the veteran center. Just more shots taken around the uh, home lake campus. And then I've also volunteered some of my times for a group called Rational Animal that works with at-risk animals in the shelters throughout New York and the five boroughs. And this was used for a campaign for the city of New York where we were, there you'll see, this was the kiosk, uh, the ads that ran on the kiosks. They make, this project is called Mother's Comfort Project where they actually sew and make these little beds and we deliver them to the animal shelters for cats and dogs. So that was the premise of that whole ad right there. And that was Coco. He was a great dog. He was sitting in the laundry, and I had the trouble trying to get him to have any response. So I started barking at him, like, come on, boy. And I was going, rap, rap, rap. And he like, jumped up on the side of the cart, and that was the look he gave me. And that was the shot. So I've been doing this my whole life, working commercially. And there was so there's something inside of all of us that wants to help, and how that manifests is in many different ways. And I had this idea. I wanted to use my creative skills to be applied to more direct, something more involved with a, a direct connection to do some helping. I wasn't sure at first, but then I had this idea to develop a method of moving beyond simply making artwork uh, that would become a, just another aesthetic commodity. You know, how do you make that bridge, that gap, that gap of making something? I was inundated, every, especially during the holiday times, I was inundated with all these envelopes from everybody to help you know, feed the homeless, help the animals, help the Native American Indians, help Greenpeace, all of them. I just had stacks of these envelopes. I kept saying, I cannot handle all this. I can't give them all money. It just dawned on me, what I can do as a creative person is I can sell my work and give them part of the proceeds because for me to shoot and do things cost money. And I realized artists are on the low end of the totem pole and they need to get paid also. And that's when I came up with my concept of art is helping. Artists split the sale of their, of their artwork, their prints. A large portion goes to the nonprofit and the other portion goes back to the artist. And this is all after the costs are all covered for printing, shipping, insurance, and all the details. This paragraph explains exactly what this is all about. A portion of the purchase price is also tax deductible because the foundation I'm working with, we have a 501c3 as the collection on the back end, and that is, it only covers partial amount of the purchase, but that's still a great value. And again, I have a range of nonprofits, somewhere around 15 or 18 nonprofits that I've chosen to work with. This is just a few of them. If you go to the website, artishelping.com, you would see the full roster. So I started talking to artists, and it wasn't just photographers. I started talking to sculptors, painters, I sell uh, other photographers, and I started bringing in a, a wide range of people. This wasn't a curatorial project. There was no theme to how I selected the artwork. I just wanted to have a range that people might be interested. So I started meeting people such as Jose, who does these really great installation pieces in this one where he was welding cars together in Brooklyn. Another friend of mine had photographs when he used to shoot at the ballet in New York and he knew Baryshnikov, and he knew a lot of the famous dancers, so he had an archive of material he was willing to let me use for the project. This is interesting. He photographed this gentleman doing pantomime in Central Park in the 1970s. 
total unknown. Years later, it turns out it was Robin Williams. A friend I met recently is from Iran. He's here in New York now, in the New York area. And he showed me this really amazing series that he had shot by moonlight in the deserts of Iran. Uh, another friend that I met <clears throat> does these really wonderful cartoon-like drawings. Very New York-based, if you know anything about Greek diners. To my Greek friends, kala. Another friend of mine from Czech Republic. She's been everywhere from Cuba to She's been all over the world, and she does these stories. And this was, uh, I'm not exactly remember which story this was, but she has a great sensibility. Her name is Hannah. Diane Rosen does these amazing pastel drawings, and she also does these large paintings. Again, we had, she had photographed the paintings, or this one was a pastel, and then we would use them as prints. Everything I sell are prints made by Dugal in New York. They're exhibition quality inkjet pigment prints. So the standards on them are very high. Uh, a woman, a, a photographer here in New York, I, I call her Chen. She did a whole series about this town. I think it's somewhere in Pennsylvania where there are certain people who can't be near any electronic devices, cell phones, microwaves, anything. So they have to live in these isolated areas with none of those electrical interferences. And these are some of the shots that she did from this story. Jack Perno is a photographer I know in Chicago, well known for his fashion work. He was doing a whole, he still does a whole series of large format 20 by 24 uh, Polo Polaroid transfers where you actually shoot Polaroid film and then they go into a tray of water and transfer it onto paper. So every piece is unique. The process with the water and the film emulsion just does whatever it does and then you seal it onto the paper and this is what you get. This was another one of Jack's shots. An interesting story behind that. We sold this one as a large print, 20 by 24. And I had called Jack up shortly after he sold it. And he said, oh, hey, man, thanks. I got the check. And I said, oh, great. But he said, I want you to know getting the check was nice, but that really wasn't the best part about it. And I said, well, what's up? He goes, it was so cool knowing that that, that week I actually sold a piece of work and fed a lot of people because it was bought and the money went to city, uh, Meals on Wheels in New York. So that whole connection really came together. His artwork was doing something. Art is helping. Antonio Mari, a friend of mine from Brazil, was driving a cab to make some money in New York. He's told me the story about this guy just walked out in the middle of 42nd Street and just stood in front of his car. And I said, cool, love it. <laughs> Let's go with it. He also shot this in the subways of New York. Julie Gross, a uh, very well-known painter here in New York, does these large canvases, but we ended up photographing them and making prints with them. Daniel Meyer, a photographer living on the West Coast, did a whole series about the blandness of architecture. And the cool thing is that <laughs> He, his whole project was about these, these structures that are just totally devoid, but yet they become so beautiful, they become so graphic, so it's almost a contradiction. He's talking about the blandness, and yet at the same time, it's, almost, it's very beautiful to look at. And then this one at the Bomb Museum, which I thought was really funny. Uh, my friend Jada in uh, New Jersey. She has a great sensibility. I love the surrealist overtones. Adam works with fonts and he did all sorts of type treatment. Very clever, he did a whole series. The, this is a print, the originals you would see that, that goldish color, yellow is actually glittery. So it's, well, this whole thing is shiny. Another Adam from Chicago, just beautiful landscape work. 
Donald Ficino. This is actually one of my photographs uh, we did for a New York Spaces magazine here in New York, and I was photographing a story about him, and that's him in one of his studios. And these are some of his uh, oil paintings. His brother actually does collage photo work down in Florida. And these were some of his pieces he, he uh, showed to me. And we said, sure, these would be great. Uh, Norma lives out in the west, I believe, New Mexico. And I just love the sensibility that is a whole different feeling when you're dealing with people in major cities, Chicago, New York, California, San Francisco, as opposed to when you go out to New Mexico and those areas. And I love that. And I thought this was me. I love the oversizedness of the bumblebee and all that. It's just there's really something very New Mexican about it that I like. Uh, Ajuk does a lot of travel stories. And this was from one story that he did in Russia. I believe he told me he did this from a, a train as they were driving some open fields. David Arkey is a still life photographer in New York. And one of the cool things about David, this is actually his work, he actually incorporates using x ray machines to photograph the products that he's doing. Jack Cousy, uh, an architectural photographer, but also does, art, he's been on archaeological digs in Egypt. And this is from these two photographs you'll see are from those archaeological digs in an area called uh, Siwa. Uh, James Weber, interesting. He's doing these tintypes. This is an old process, tintype process. So he's actually using a very large format camera on location. These were shot you know, in the last few years, but they have the feel of something from another generation. Sky Kim does these. These are very large drawings, actually. It's, unfortunately, there's nothing here to show you the scale, but these are rather large. These are done with pen and ink and color, watercolors, I believe. Stephanie Dworkin lives in Brooklyn. She went out with a toy Holga camera and did a whole series on Coney Island on the off season. Just, you know, beautiful, nostalgic, romantic kind of images. Frank Palaya. Um, these are actually sculptural paintings. I mean, there's, there's about four inches behind this. And when I met Frank and I said, you know, the images are great. Let's just strip out the background. We don't need these. They can work as prints. And he agreed with me. So this is from one of his series. Frank was in China and did a whole series of these uh, trompe l'oeil murals. And these were images that he'd seen on the walls in his trips through China. Aaron is up in the Bronx, in, in the New York area. He, he builds these elaborate sets inside his studio. There's something very mystical, magical about Aaron's work that I love. Jupiter Jones, very classical looking Olympians. He did a whole series. We, I just have two of them, but and I, oops, well, only one maybe. Suki Krieger, sounds familiar, it's my mom. <laughs> my mom was working on a computer a few years ago, had no idea what she was doing, and she was ended up producing these works. But before that, she was also working in batik, which is a wax process, and she was doing these large canvases. But my mom's always had this uh, natural ability to create works, so I wanted to put her in the book also. Cynthia, <laughs> her work's very interesting. She shoots in film, but then she'll take the film and actually beat it up and do things to it. And this is why it has all this, this marking to it. She doesn't want it to be just a fresh new image. There's, a, there's, there's some quality about it that comes through because of the way she works. She'll also sandwich neg uh, negatives together and get these multiple images. 
in some of her newer work, she's doing more of this montage. So she's playing with photography as a physical object also, not just as a photograph unto itself. And this uh, uh, does these beautiful paintings. It was just something very, I, I mean, I just love the color and the geometrics, just very straightforward visual retinal pleasure. And this is some of my work that I'm showing, on, that I'm selling through the project. This is shot out in South Dakota. Through my journey, I've been travel out west a bunch, and this was something I saw driving down the highway one day. Did a whole series here in New York called Concrete Landscape. And this whole idea of how we have a couple of trees here and there, and what you see associated with the trees. So New Yorkers, this is our landscape. Landscape, you know, a lot of people say when you, the word landscape, they think of these giant vistas out west and the mountains and all that. And I said, well, yeah, well, we got trees in New York City on the sidewalks, but here's what we get. This was a mattress sitting on a bunch of uh, trash piles. And the guy had walked by the camera as I was on long exposure. And he got recorded as kind of a ghost image. Very, I, I love how uh, cameras do that. This was another series I was working on from, called Affordable Housing. For those of you who live in places like New York, you know how the living can get extremely expensive. And I was doing this very satirical mix on uh, photographing inside of cardboard boxes as the only apartments that will be allowed or affordable in the next few years. And the taglines, this says, because you deserve this. These taglines were actually taken off actual ads in the New York Times Magazine for luxury housing I used to see all the time for these high-rise buildings. And one of them said, because you deserve this. So I just lifted that and used it for my piece. Here's your cardboard box. Now get out of the way. This was a little pasta box that I photographed. It's funny, because when I photographed it, the top of the box, the way it's lit, it actually looks like it would be a nice mural on the ceiling with a skylight. But again, this is a you know, cheap cardboard box holding pasta. How this works is you go to the website, artishelping.com. And when you find an image you like, you'll, you'll see on the bottom right of every image, it says purchase. And this is a photograph by Adam that I showed you earlier with the rock. He's in Chicago. This is uh, Disneyland out in California. So you say, OK. You hit the purchase. It brings up choose pricing option. All the nonprofits are listed in three categories of what I sell. 250 for 1114, 1620, 500, and 2024 by 1,000. So you pick the group you want to support and what size print you want. And that dictates what pricing you're going to pay. So they're all listed. You just take one of the three that you want. Um, you can use PayPal or use your credit card, which then you get points. So you get the artwork, you get points, you get the tax deduction a little bit, and you get great, and you get the satisfaction of helping wherever you can help. Oh, here you go. The buyer gets to fund a nonprofit of their choice. You get to get the uh, quality print. A portion is tax deductible. You get to support an artist. Nonprofit gets funding. And there's a very value-rich exchange. And I get to buy tofu. And that is art is helping. So thank you. Appreciate you watching.